Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to iHeartRadio Show Bad It's Good. Today we have somebody, you know, listen, I have a uh, I have a voice for radio and podcasting, but today we have somebody that has a face for an actual TV show. I don't even know why they have <laughs> deemed to come on this podcast, but also <laughs> not only that, a true talent. Uh, he has a chef, you might know his book, Cook It, Spill It. Throw it, the not so real housewives parody cookbook with our good friend Amy Phillips. You hear him on Jeff Lewis live pretty much on a daily basis. But also, I I met this dude at Countess Luann show a long time ago. We probably both don't really remember it because I had been inebriated deeply during oh. Countess Luann, and I believe he was too. But then I'm bumped into this so much at BravoCon, and I'm telling you, one of the nicest dudes out there. He hails from Limerick Island, <laughs> a celebrity chef, but just a really funny dude and a nice dude and that's what we always celebrate uh chef Stuart o'keefe welcome back to the well not welcome back uh, welcome to the show I yes mean, hopefully i'll be back a few more times but uh Thank yeah you. thanks so much for having me this is um, fun dude i talked to this girl uh, we'll start off at BravoCon. There was this girl, Abby, that was on my show with a first person account from that first night at the Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. Yes. And I had bumped into you downstairs and you were mm -hmm. talking, I think it was like Heather McDonald. Yeah. And you, you, it was when Ramona cut in line to get drinks and then didn't pay for it. Yeah. And this yeah. girl cut in front of Abby. But she got, she was so mad. She told Ramona off and Ramona asked if she wanted a picture and she said, no, but she goes, but I did get a picture with chef Stu and he is, <laughs> he is hot. Like this, this lady was like, he is hot. I go, I'm going to tell chef you said that. And, uh, very excited. What was your experience at BravoCon? Cause I saw you upstairs in the Gansvorts like rooftop many times. And I think we both exchanged like, yeah. what the hell is going on? Looks It was like, so like Jeff, so I flew in on like the Thursday and just like me and Amy were like schlepping 27 boxes of books <laughs> from fucking Midtown over to like the Javis to get in there to load in for Thursday for the Friday, Friday when it opened. Um, we got all that out of the way. Then Jeff was like, look, I'm not going to BravoCon. I'm going to have my own little <laughs> mini BravoCon. You know, Jeff Lewis, he's like, I need to see everybody. So um, he held like, you know, a little like party at the top of the roof of the Gansey board and like a ton of housewives showed up, which yeah, was amazing. Yeah, that was Thursday night. Dude. It was I a Thursday night, there. yeah. I was with Alyssa, the produ your producer, yes, and all this yes. stuff. And, and I was just like, what the hell? They just like, kept walking in. It was like kissing, but also kissing the ring. And then Heather McDonald was there. Yeah. Lisa Barlow was there. They kept popping up. Like Teddy, said, Cynthia, Kyle, who else? Um, Caroline Manzo came, I, which I'll talk to you about later. I'm, I got an invite <laughs> to her house. So that that's another thing. That was a great uh, connection. I, I mean, it was just insane. Like, it was just like, I was like, what's happening? You know? <laughs> that's what it felt Especially like for me, because this is so new for me, because, what? you know, I wrote the book with Amy. And so, like, I was never in the Bravo world. It was just that's an idea I, I had. To know. I wanted to know is how, like, you kind of got into this Bravo world, because now it is such a big part of your world. And I'm like, it, do yeah. you really, like, regret the day that you got involved into the Bravo world? Because yeah. you actually have a true talent of cooking. And now you're dealing with these women that are like, I mean, they're they're amazingly talented and funny, but it's a different kind of air that they breathe. Yeah. I mean, look, I was sitting on the sofa, like, back in 2019. I was like, has anyone ever done a Housewives cookbook? Like, this just seems like such a fun idea. And I needed a, a second cookbook. And um, and I just kind of put the get the idea together in my head. I flew to New York, met the publisher, and I was like, "Hey, I have this book," and they're like, "And eh, we don't really like that." And I'm like, "But I have this kind of housewives idea." And they're like, "That we like." I'm like, "It was like an elevator pitch." Like I was just <laughs> it's like, "It's always it's always the one that you yeah. don't plan." And the on other all. one, I had like you know a 35 page document <laughs> and how we're gonna sell it and marketing and strategy and all this stuff. And then like I just do this elevator pitch, like, "Oh yeah, we want the housewives one." I'm like, "What?" And so. I got my agent to ask Amy Phillips, would she do it? Because I definitely need like a partner in crime. You know, and Amy like dresses up as all the housewives. Yes, she impersonates perfect. them and just the photography will look amazing with her and stuff. So um, it got green led and we sold it. And and then we wrote it like, you know, during the pandemic and shot it like in 20, like, yeah, like shot it like the end of 2020, 2021. And then like, yeah, it came out in like November of 
like November of 2021. And yeah, that's kind of how I met Jeff was going on. That's his- what I was like, okay. So then, then, then that met you that then Jeff Yeah, and, and Jeff, uh, I mean, did, did Jeff pursue you like a wild banshee? Were you no, like, off, I mean, dude, like, dude, it, off. It I mean, is awkward. Yeah. Let's see. Like Jeff was like, Jeff had a boyfriend at the time, Scott. And so me and Amy yeah. went on the show and look, he was like, you know, Jeff, like he's very flirty, messes around and all that stuff. And I had like this license plate. So fucking embarrassing. And, um, it was, it said Chef Stew on it. And I don't you know why I got plate. it. Wait, it's so you, fucking, it's so pompous. It's like a personalized awful. personalized license plate that it was, Chef Stew? I just Stewart. thought it would be, so, oh, and he just ripped me a new one on the radio <laughs> for probably like a month. They just kept talking about it. And it got so bad where like people were sending him photographs of me driving down the street. And I'm like, I don't think I'm fucking really with this. So Chef I was a running joke. Like they got so much mileage out of me. And um, so Jeff was like, look, we swapped phone numbers and he would invite me out to dinners with the chumps and all that stuff. And so I just got to know him, but he was with Scott. So like, and I was recently single, so and I wasn't really looking for anything. And um, him and Scott broke up, but then we kind of just started talking and, and just kind of like, we go to dinner and kind of get to know each other. And we waited like a few weeks before, like we did anything, you know, like, yeah. Like wait, stuff. wait, am, am I allowed to ask? <laughs> I know this is kind of, cause I want to get into Beverly Hills and all that. Do you, can, can I ask what your, what the first kiss was? Like who made the, like, did he make the move? Did you make the move? Is that even allowed to be talked about? You it was like, me. yo, it's fine. I think it was like a mutual thing. Like we went to dinner, like on like Valentine's day, which is so random. It just happened. I was like, look, so let's just go to- you don't do a random Valentine's no, day. No, because dinner. it was like the day before it was like Super Bowl Sunday. And we talked about it cause he was single. And I was like, and I was like, I don't know. I said, would we ruin things because like we're friends and stuff like that and i'm like i don't know i said look let's just see what happens you know i said look what are you doing tomorrow night and he's like it's valentine's day and i'm like yeah i know i said there's never gonna be a right fucking time like let's just you know <laughs> so like we go it's christmas yeah <laughs> yeah exactly and so we like go to dinner and like he runs into like two or three people he knows so we're just like oh shit <laughs> like it wasn't meant to happen this way but anyway it was it was fine we had and a, also we had a you're great in a car dinner. that says chef stew on the license plate oh you god up it's on, just yeah. i mean at that um, point i think i had it removed and changed which you know i'm well, happier now I will say, though, it, it, you know, I try not to listen to Bravo podcast or Bravo, yeah. like, even though like when I do, I, I have Sirius in my car and I, I'm a huge Howard mm-hmm. Stern fan. And when I listen to Jeff, I get w- angry because he is to me like I'm like, this is so good. The environment he creates yeah. on his radio show yeah. is so damn good. And you fit in so well. It reminds me of Stern. I listened uh, a couple weeks ago. I think I had mentioned this to you at BravoCon. You guys were literally just talking about your bathroom habits going on a trip. And I was like, I could have listened to that for hours. Because People love it. Was, it. it was like yeah. a reality show. It is. You know, yeah. like you can sense real relationships. And that's what makes me love radio. And Jeff Lewis and even Amy Phillips, to a degree, has a great show as well. Um, BravoCon, uh, you know, you were you got to meet a lot of fans and a lot of fans yeah. love you. I didn't How realize was that? it was like, I was like the best. I honestly, it was like the three of the best days of my life. I, I had so much fun. I couldn't believe so many people knew me. I mean, There's a lot so of, a lot of it was too. from Jeff because I was, you know, going on the Jeff's Jeff show. And of course, like everybody's like, are you guys on pause? Are you not on pause? I'm like, we're off, we're off pause. We're fine. We're like together. Everything's good. Like it was like, is Jeff here? I'm like, no. Are you still together? Yes. Like it, it was, it was yeah, the same yeah, question yeah. over and over again. Right. And then there was a lot that knew me from the book and then Amy's show as well. But it was just like a lot of people, a lot of housewives knew me because a lot of them have the book. And um, even and it's my just, mom has the book. I bought my mom the book last Christmas because she had seen me promote yeah, it on my Instagram because yeah. Amy had sent me a, a nice box and stuff. Yeah. And, and my mom goes, I want that. So I bought it for her for Christmas. So my mom has like my mom has that and the Ariana and Tom Sandoval like drink. Book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like she has a collection of her own Bravo books. But you guys, the book is actually great. So if you are looking for a gift for your parents, they're like, why do you watch Bravo? Get them this book for the holidays, which are coming up. OK, but like so much love for you out there and you were shocked i mean for me personally people even knew me and it made my body turn to sweat and i was just so nervous it was so How great do you handle- though that feeling is just it like is. it's just like wow i wrote something i'm in in a world for like people like me for kind of like i'm just being honest and this is like the true me there's no act or anything because you know i would do food network shows and i'd have to be like this like happy irish man like showing you how to cook in the kitchen and it wasn't really me yeah. like i mean yes i am a happy guy but i can't like you know you can't cuss or you can't like really kind of like and show like your actual sense of humor you know exactly exactly so 
um, you know, doing these podcasts and like going on Jeff's show, it's like, it's really me. And he brings it out of me. And like, it's like my authentic self. Right. And yeah. so, and people are liking me for it. So that was like, I was able to see all that at BravoCon, like the love from people. It was just amazing. No, I yeah. had people come up to me and say, like, who was your favorite person you met? And they said, Chef. Like, that one lady was like, I got a picture with Chef Sue. And that it's made crazy. her flip in night. Like, yeah. she had just got finished telling off Ramona for skipping line and yeah. drink. Yeah. And, and then she got you made her night then. Um, who was the who was your favorite housewife that you had not met before? Because you met a lot through Jeff's show and through your actual work. Was there one that you were looking forward to meeting that was like, this is the best experience? Oh, I, yeah. I mean, I've met a lot of them recently. And I'm, one I didn't meet and I'd been chatting with her a bit on, on DMs was uh, Dolores. Dolores Catania. Catania. Yeah. Because she is the Irish boyfriend. Yes. So I was hanging out with him on the Friday night at the Legends Ball. <laughs> and we had the best night. And then Brock was there too from Vanderbilt. Yeah, Sheena, yeah, that's because you guys yeah. were all in that the, 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 the drink were, corner. You yes. guys were all standing. Obviously, yeah. And it was but, just like I didn't care but, who was on stage. I was just like, know, stay here at the drinks. I think and, you the know, Legends Ball happened. And, and Paulie didn't care there. either. Like we were right beside the bar. We were having a great time. We wanted to see what was going on. And we just laughed our asses off for like two hours. It was the best time. No. And then at the Gansport, which everybody was staying in, I was lucky enough to stay there too. It, you guys, I tried to explain it to you on the show, but they had the lobby bar, which was just like a who's who of Bravo yeah. celebrities. Yeah. And then if you went up to the rooftop, they're like those parties there. Like it started with Jeff Lewis's party Thursday night. Mm -hmm. Night. Friday night was the official Bravo party where I'm watching Jen Shaw like cut loose like she's doing the running man and the Roger Rabbit like I've never seen somebody dance like that in their lives like not a care in the world it felt like I was in a weird fever dream the whole mm -hmm. weekend and it was um, cool I thought for the fans like like the, like everybody was kind of easily accessible like yeah, so if you missed them at BravoCon you could go to these places and like run into them and get a photograph which yeah, was cool. exactly. Nobody. That's what I said. Even if you couldn't next year, if you can't get tickets and you're in New York, just go like they were there everywhere. You'll find you'll find out so the nice. hotel they're staying at. It's not that hard to find out. Well, Brock was also saying, and I think this is for all Bravo liberties, is that the Bravo liberties kind of needed this just as much as the fans did to see that mm -hmm. there's so much love for them. Yeah. 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 You it's know? so nice. Yeah. Can you tell me any was there any bad experiences with anybody at BravoCon? Was there any um, like, well, that's weird. There, that was, there was a fun, there was a fun story with, um, with me and Amy and we were like standing at our booth. I right? were just like, I mean, we were like chained to that desk for three days, like selling books and like <laughs> selling my seasoning and um, we're there and I see Captain Sandy and she's going from her booth. <laughs> and she, I'm good, like, Hey, Sandy. And she's going from her booth back to the green room. So she has to go past our booth. So I'm like, oh my God, Amy, it's Captain Sandy. And like, say hi to her, say hi to her. Quick, 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 she's coming, she's coming. I'm like, you fucking know her. Like you, you've interviewed her. And you do her, her voice. Like, Amy does a great like, Captain yeah, Sandy like, voice. Hey, yeah. Sandy. And it's like, um, and so like, so <laughs> Amy's like, hey, Sandy, it's Amy Phyllis from Reality Checked. And like, she like turns and she does a double take and just keeps walking. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. And like, Amy's like, Amy's like, oh my God, that was so fucking embarrassing. Like, I'm kind of humiliated. And I'm like, oh shit. And so I'm looking at her. Then Amy looks at me. She's like, what can I do? And I'm saying, I don't think you can do anything. Like, you'll see her again later, like tomorrow or something. Like, she probably just like, you know, she's in a rush, like whatever. He's, she's like, that was so embarrassing. She's like, I do know her. And then she's like, I need to go back to the green room to get like a cup of tea or something like that. My throat's kind of hurting me. I'm like, are you going back there to redeem yourself? She's like, yeah, I mean, I'll just go back there and like say hi. I'm like, you can't, you can't, you'll just be the fucking it's crazy ruined. lady. You'll be the crazy. So anyway, the next day she went and um, she was in the green room. Sandy was in there and she was like, hey, it's Amy Phillips. And then she still did the double take because Amy, <laughs> because Amy had bangs. Like she doesn't always have like, yeah, yeah, you know, bangs. Amy's always wearing fucking wigs and hats and stuff. So she, like Sandy like didn't know what she looked like. And then she like, boom, like, it clicked with her and then she was like, oh my God, hey, it's Amy. Oh my God, that would be great if Captain Sandy really truly was carrying around a hatred for Amy Phillips, the nicest oh, person ever. Yeah, ever. Yeah, like, it was so good. It was, just um, like, it was a funny moment. Okay, so I had an experience and maybe this will get us into talking about Beverly Hills a little bit because we just finally were released from our dungeon of watching this show for the entirety of the season last yeah. night with the reunion part three. Uh, did you watch this entire season? Yeah. Yes. Beverly Hills you, is like my number one. I think New York yeah. is my number two and then OC. 
Uh, how do how, how did you feel overall about this season? I mean, like in compared to other seasons, where where I mean, do you do you hate watch I it? Do you love watch it? How do like, you like? I love to watch it, but I felt like you know there was about five or six episodes where it was just kind of like it just yeah, like yeah, just yeah. nothing really happened, and I was questioning myself when I watched it. I'm like, did I see this last week? Do you know? Kind of there was a few episodes where like nothing happened. I felt like some of the storylines were kind of pushed. Lisa Renna with like the acting crying. Like it just well, you, was you'd like. You have a storyline, like you said, and then it would just disappear. It would like, like yeah. Like, we actually and had then, real like, issues happening. Like Dorit was going through intense trauma therapy. And then all of a sudden at the end, it's like. I mean, she Dorit Kemsley, that. <laughs> Dorit I mean, she just. Feels better, yeah. You know, yeah. like. Um, it, there was like, it was good. And then it was bad. And then it was good. And then it got really good. Yeah. Okay. You know? So. I thought, and the reunions, felt, I felt the same way too. Like I was so excited. Like, listen, guys, I'm not into sports. I, I wish I was a real guy, but I'm not. But that these are my sports. And that first reunion, I was so excited for. The second episode, I was like, zzz, I was so like, this is boring. This is, and then last night's episode, the third episode, I, I was like. It was shocking. It, it, it was. was it, the I mean, everything. And I want to tell a story to Stu, just because I met Kathy Hilton at BravoCon on a Thursday night at this direct TV party that I had to work. And I have, I have always appreciated Kathy Hilton for the bizarre things she says. She, you know, kind of like klutzy, but rich, mm -hmm. all like, you know, caviar on potatoes, all that stuff. But then I got a picture with her and I thought she knew me because she's like, you know, like my post, which is so silly. Like, like she would remember an Instagram, yeah. but I sensed a very intense energy. I told the audience, like, I was like, I got like, I went up to her. I was like, Hey, and then I was like, by the end of it, I was like shook. I was kind of scared. Cause I was like, yeah, you have a really intense energy. I didn't say that to her, but you have a really intense energy about her. Um, but last night she came out swinging in a way that I didn't expect because it was like I thought she would fumble her replies and all of this stuff, and she was like hey. a prize fighter in a weird way. But it almost made me, it almost made me believe more of that this actually happened. Yes, uh, that's a on, that's a good a way of putting it. I don't think I put it right like that earlier, but it it just kind of like really like put the nail in the coffin that like this actually happened. And you're okay, really, so, yeah. So this is what I want to like. So explain like uh, in terms of Lisa Rinna and stuff like that. Yeah. I always, she's like Jax Taylor before her from Vanderpump Rules, who's no longer there. But Lisa Rinna is one of the funnest people to make memes about and to talk about yeah. just because she's so extreme. She's a caricature of a caricature at this point. So it's really easy. And she starts crap with people every season. So it's really sure. fun to go up against yeah. her. But in that sense, I also feel, and I don't know how you feel, that she's an unreliable narrator. So if Kathy had, if this had happened and Crystal came out and goes, Kathy said this and this and this, I would 100% believe it. But since yeah. it's Lisa, Rinna, and Erica, I was like, wait a sec, you guys make up crap. I mean, you guys are so bizarre. What is your mm. take on that whole situation? Because you actually probably know uh, Lisa, Rinna, in real life. I mean, I don't know her in real life, but like... I feel like with the Denise Richards thing, like I like used to love Lisa Renner. And then I kind of went there. I'm like, mm, you're kind yeah. of like annoying me now. Now I feel like you're really kind of being mean. And it's like, it's not as fun anymore, you know? But in this particular instance, the reaction from Kathy last night, she got so angry. It's like, she came with like ammunition. And at the more like, and when, Erica said it like I thought felt her response to Erica was so like disgusting, just the way she tried to put her down. And I was like, dude, like she's been through the ringer with the fucking lawsuits and all that stuff. But because she said like what you probably everybody knows she said that at the nightclub. Like everybody does. Like it was out in the like, And we've the known that since January of this we've, past Exactly. Year. We've known exactly. it since the day it that's why I'm saying it's like we've heard this now for like eight, nine months. And I'm like, exactly. I don't know where the shock value is it, anymore. Exactly. It, it's weird. She did. She just like, you know, like apparently like you know she said two words like an f word and an n word or whatever like that's kind of I, what I was out the there yeah i never heard the n word yeah i, I heard that heard the i heard that too and like look i mean when andy was in town getting his star on the walker fame me and amy went to kind of like you know because he, yeah, yeah, yeah. he wrote the forward for a book we wanted to support him so we went there we briefly met him and after that andy had like a luncheon somewhere and jeff lewis went to lunch and i was yeah i I'd, I'd been dating jeff i think at the time 
and Jeff was going over to the luncheon, he met Lisa Renna. It was two days after the Aspen trip, and Lisa told him everything. So of and Jeff she did. and of everything she did. that and like <laughs> she why would Lisa say that to Jeff like two days afterwards? You know what I mean? She was like, oh, well, my God, Lisa, I feel was like, like was saying that to anybody. She like, like she probably said it to the mailman, too. I feel yeah. like she was like saying it to everybody. Yeah. But my problem then with Lisa is, well, first off, if this is OK to ask a serious question as a gay man, does it how I mean, that's a slur. Does that how do you take that? Is that a slur? Are you like, it's just that ah, you it's just it's it just is. you can't say that anymore anymore. Exactly, and she knows right? that. And it's like and I like, I do believe she said that. I feel like she said it kind of under her breath or like however she yes. said it. In that and kind of rich like, nudity, like, oh, this blah, oh, yeah, that, blah doesn't want to play fucking, Michael Jackson. You know, that you know? fucking F that won't play my fucking song. Like I could see her do that. And like and then it's like, oh, well, who Erica said that she said that, right? But yeah. it's like if Erica was in front of her and she said it, like then she's the only one that heard it. Like, so like, like it's like, well, you're the only one that heard it. Like nobody else heard it. And it's like, well, that's fine. Only one person needs it. <laughs> only one, only one person needs to hear it. Like it just, like, but, but that's what I'm saying though, because it's, it's Erica and we, she's been like, we don't really trust her as a character on this show. That is, it's, that's what I'm saying. The issue yeah. is here. Like if mm -hmm. it was somebody else, if all of those ladies that stood up and, and by the way, we always talk about on the show, None of these, all of these ladies are suspect just because they're on the show to begin yes. with. I don't doubt that any, I, I bet all of those ladies have said some really gnarly crap that we're For not aware sure. of. Doesn't excuse it, but I'm just saying that we don't have it on camera. We need yeah. to see it. That's a reality yeah. show to see, not to be heard. Like I, I just, I just think the claim that Erica would say that Kathy said that, I think it's a massive claim. And like, you just wouldn't, you wouldn't make that up. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you just, I just, she just wouldn't. Well, yeah, that's, I always, two things can be true at once, right? Yeah. Like Lisa can be a like wild and like a bad actor at times and an unreliable narrator, but that doesn't mean, I mean, the thing that I think then she took it too far because she wanted to prove a point was the locking herself in the room, you mm -hmm. know, like, you know, like I was so scared. I locked myself in the room. I mean, that's a bit like, dramatic no, or I'm like, I have, to, I, have to, I have to say this, like I'll get cancer. Like, okay, calm down. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? My mom has cancer. F yeah. You. It's like, 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 don't say that's that. Really ridiculous i thought that was see that's the thing it's like she's kind of screwing herself with the like people believing her because of some dumb shit she says but like, like if, you, if she just said it like just like monotone i would totally yeah. believe it but she but, screams it and i think though like where like you can believe it is like we saw her spiraling on camera kathy over the fucking tequila like she was she was she was gone and then, like anything yes, else, was yeah, just yeah, going to yeah. piss her off. And like, totally, and she, she yes. totally said that shit. And then when I fucking hated it so much, and I felt like re me and Jeff were watching it last night, and I was looking at Jeff, and I was like, "She's a fucking bitch." Like, Kathy, would you guys the talk way, over the each way she, other during the show? No, I can't. He'll like, kill me. Like, no, I can't. Like, <laughs> we have to. Like, no, because he he always says that about me. At the ready, he's like, he's the fucking worst one to watch a movie with. He just keeps talking. But it's like. The, like the reunion it's like you can't just watch it through for an hour and like okay let's have a discussion it's like you need to like pause it and be like okay yeah what the fuck and so like i really really thought she was so nasty kathy was the way she just started to blame it on kyle it's fucking nothing got to do with kyle but you know what? that so is a cool. mean fucking sister oh no but th that's what i'm saying is that you really truly see that that's a real family dynamic and I'm like, you know, she's a bully like, she's a fucking bully and that's why kyle genuinely is scared of kathy like yeah. genuinely scared of and kathy. it's like and it is and it's like the girl said it like you know you guys just so you know like you're doing this to you're ruining me and she's like no no no, no. she's doing that to you don't get it twisted like kathy's doing that to you like and you're letting her I it's mean, crazy it, i could just that anxiety tanked. that she had the, the, i felt so well, bad for her anxiety and then at the end like she couldn't even stay there for a toast no. you guys and she, she like, that's the thing there. and she kind of like what did she she said some like one liner i guess like oh it's something else like alluding like you know i'm gonna leave you but you know i'm mad about something else but i'm gonna leave you like just sitting there yeah. i'm like you're a fucking bitch like that and you then would Kathy do goes, that to her i think andy goes uh so will you be at uh fair's wedding i'm sure i'm sure we'll be there like it was so like yeah it's weird oh. and like i'm but it but also what i loved about it was that it was actually we always say reality shows can be fake this felt so real that like you know, like my butthole quivered. I was yeah. like, oh no, oh no. no it was <laughs> just like, I just, it came, it just got so nasty. And I just like, and I just the way like Kathy was attacking them. I'm like, look, 
when you're caught out or like say like when she comes up she's like i was reading the text there's no text it's like okay it's it's called delete like yeah, shut like, up. like shut <laughs> up by the way i love that cavi it's potentially like, well, it's well, complete love- gaslighting like it's 100 percent like you know, last year, all the Bravo fans had to get into like the legal system because of Erica Jane and Jen Shaw. I keep joking that this year we have to get involved in hacking because all of a sudden everybody's saying Lisa's hacking into like Bravo accounts. And now Kathy is pretend. I love the fact that every season we get into something new. It's like, that we're like I just want to get into learning how to cook. Like, like she- I want Stu's ability. I don't want to learn about the law, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, so it is, we can agree that it's crazy. We can, I think, uh, also come to terms that Lisa is so extreme that she does not help her case at all. It is, yeah. It's like, I can see how the viewers can see it, but like, I still believe her. I definitely think that happened. We've all known it's happened since January, as you were saying. And then like the fact that Lisa told Jeff like two days later and stuff, like everything that happened, it's like totally happened. They're all fucking terrified of Kathy. I get it. I, I would pay good money to have like, I wish, this is why I want people just to have GoPros attached to them at all times. I will, I want to see Jeff, Lewis's reaction when Lisa's telling him this, like if he's just like have like a hard listening face or if he's jumping yeah, yeah, in. Yeah. Like I um so finally we're over. Wouldn't they always do these secrets revealed episodes on on Housewives? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't it be great if next week there's a secrets revealed and it actually is the sprinter van footage and we get all the oh. footage of Kathy saying everything? It's like- yeah, I mean, if, God, I know we only had that footage. There was something last night I read on Twitter. Somebody said something like like Andy was quick to shut Lisa Renna down or something like that. Did something, did I miss that or no, something? No, no, no. Well, what so, happened? I mean, remember this isn't like an edited show, you guys. And that's why I'm like, we're seeing bits and pieces. I would pay extra for the unedited, but mm. whatever. Remember in the first episode where Lisa came in with like a manila folder of receipts. Got it. And got Andy it. goes, look, look, you have receipts. And she put it behind her. Um, this woke Stan account on Twitter that is supposedly yes. got us, got tied okay. to Rinna says yes. they cut the whole scene with Lisa's receipts. Now, listen, I want I I'm I don't love Lisa Rinna as a character. You guys know that, but mm. I want to see those receipts. Like, yeah. let, you know, give that. I think that would be entertaining as hell to mm. look at all of the receipts to paint that picture. Um, I, but Kathy, I will say truly does scare me like like no i mean i get it like yeah they're all like because they're all kind of silent on the on the i'm glad erica said it what she said because i thought that was just never ever going to make the light of day like what you know what i mean but see also i'm glad they left it in though because if they didn't leave it in then it would be even more suspicious of like oh you just try to cut this out entirely entirely Entirely. like yeah because she probably sent a cease and desist or is going to threatened to sue bravo and maybe she said like i'm going to take down bravo i'm going to take down nbc because she knew what she'd done in the club because didn't she start saying that in the sprinter van so she was like oh fuck but also if lisa renna if kathy's this is where kathy i think made a huge mistake why would you let lisa renna take you home when you know lisa renna as a character especially with what she's done to your sister in the past i wouldn't trust lisa renna to save my life but i do believe that she was i believe lisa renna was also uh, you know, going, yes, Kathy, I agree completely. 100%. Yes, I think yes. like egging her on, believing yeah, exactly. her. So she tells you more. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Do you think Erica Jane has as much sex as she says she has? You think no, she got I think nailed that was a bit of a, I think she, that was a bit of a I lie. got dick. I get dick all the time. Like, yeah, it's just like, no, I didn't believe it at all. Wouldn't you love... But like, why did we ever even see like a, a shadowy figure at Erica? Like, I want to see a gentleman caller for Erica. Like, just show us somebody entering her house. Yeah, like, exactly. I just don't believe it. I don't either. And I th- felt like I felt like that was kind of hard in her as well with like the alcohol thing. And I was like, dude, she's been so straight and narrowed for the last how many seasons? And like the one season she gets drunk a few times, it's like you have an alcohol problem. Like, no, she, she's like, do you know what I mean? It's like we've never <laughs> seen her get sloppy like that before. <laughs> It's like, I don't think that's kind of dangerous on shows. I just, so if you were to cast this show and like, you know, you are now part of this universe in this really weird way you didn't plan on. If they said, uh, Hey, uh, chef stew, um, who, who do we keep and who do we, who do we, uh, get rid of next season or, or or, Uh, on Beverly, on Beverly Hills. Um, like, I I mean, crystal has to go. There's just, there's just nothing there. Why? I just, I just think she's just like, 
Like, I always feel like every housewife, no matter how bad they are, deserves two seasons, maybe three. Dude, yes, like, that's what to, I always say. Yeah, you, right? you can't cut someone after the first season because they're just getting warmed up and so forth. And I, I feel like that, like Crystal's, like, you know, possible, like, racial slur, the whole conversation with, like, Sutton, like, and trying to put that on her was, like, a real kind of, like, Reach. stretch to try and, like, have a bit of drama, but it kind of totally blew back in her face. Um, I just... She's just not exciting. But sometimes you don't always need a housewife that's super exciting. You need one that kind of sits in the shadows as well. And like, you know, they don't all need to be massive characters, I think. So maybe, I don't know, maybe like we give her one more season. I mean, Dorit annoys the hell out of me, but like, she's still kind of good to watch. Yeah, like it's weird. It's like she she barely said anything at the reunion, but when yeah. she tries to hop in with Kyle, it's like this is the talking. power, di- the power <laughs> dynamic is yeah. amazing because you see that, Kyle's scared to death of Kathy, but then Kyle will yell at Dorit in a moment. So like, she's like, I don't need you to speak right now, Dorit. Like Kyle needs Dorit around so she can feel like she has somebody to be Kathy over, you know? Yeah. Do you know what I felt like? Like Sutton was very quiet in this reunion, I thought. There just wasn't much out of her, I felt. For as much as she had in the season, there yeah. was, you're totally right. Like, was, was I just, just felt like they always went to her and it was just like, she was just like looking. And I was like, Jesus, this is weird. Okay. But she does have really good silent film reactions where she'll, yeah. you know, like. It's she does give the reactions, which is great. Like Garcelle, like, I really like her. And I saw her at BravoCon as well. I've, I've met her a couple of times. I've done a few shows with her, like when she did those talk shows. And um I was like, how was like the panel? And she's like, dude, she, it was rough. She's like, that reunion is rough too. We actually watch it. And I'm like, Poor shit. Brad Goreski had no clue. Like he hosted yeah. that panel, you guys. And once they started booing Rinna and like everybody had rushed to the stage, like that was like a really weird panel. I wish I went around sure. for that. Like when I was, when I was stuck to the booth. So <laughs> <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> are you good for how long do you have? Just so no, I'm, good. Good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, cool. Good. Yeah, I'm good. Um, uh, so, uh, Beverly Hills, I really don't know where you go from this because unlike other uh, reality franchises, it's gotten so dirty and we've gotten law involved. Also, I mean, Diana Jenkins was a full-time housewife. We got her for like five minutes in three-part reunion. But I like, think she sent a threatening things to Bravo too. So they're like- She totally did, thr- but that's what was, I'm saying. Like yeah. she, she's, I mean, I think she's one and she's done, gone. Right? She's definitely done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's done. Who else is her? Kyle will stay. But she said she might take a break from it. Um, maybe you bring an oldie back, you know? That's what I was saying. Do you do you keep Rinna and then put around her all of the people that she's come at over the seasons, like Denise Richards, you bring Brandy Glanville? Like, do you just have yeah, an or ultimate else, like, season? Take Rinna out and bring Denise back. But but see, Denise to me, like I, I I love Denise because her husband was like wacky and I love, I loved watching the husband, but like Denise sometimes didn't bring it. And we saw that Denise would also hide things and go Bravo, Bravo, ducking Bravo to stop seeing. I think that season just got so intense for her. And just like the attacks on her, they they all went for her. So like, yeah. And she was like, like, Lisa, you're my friend. Stop outing me. I have actually a husband. Please do not. Yeah. 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 Would you ever do a reality show with uh, Jeff? Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like it's really, like, you would, you would, uh, you're like any fights, anything like that. You would totally put put that out there. Yeah, I, I think I think we would be good TV. I like. Oh, I, I know you the, would the, be good the, TV. The, I'm yeah. just wondering, know if you would do it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, if like I just like not flipping out style though, because that's like fucking intense. Like that got really kind of uncomfortable sometimes when I'd watch that, and I was like, I like, how am I dating this guy now? But he's so <laughs> different. He's so different from. Dude, I'm I would watch. Those I was days. a huge flipping out fan, and that's yeah. like Jeff Lewis is like kind of one of my heroes, and that's why I was so upset that he's actually good at like the radio format. Because I was like, "Damn, like this guy actually has an actual talent of like decorating, and now he can do this too." He's like, to me, it's like very Howard Stern like, but the show he's intense, and like how he, I was just like, "Wait, so you know Zoila, right? Like you, you." Yeah, I see her at the weekends. She's her at the weekends. Super nice. She's so fun. <laughs> like I love her. She just like still answers Jeff back, and like just gives him like funny. <laughs> he responses. needs that. He needs it's, that. Oh, um, it's the, he loves it. Like he lives for it. It's great. You grew up in in it's uh, Limerick Island, is that right? In our, I was born in Limerick. And I lived in a small town called Nina, N E N A G H. What was pop culture like Tipperary. over there? Um, it was just like like what do you remember? Like what was popular? Like what was what were your thoughts of America as as a boy? Like did you want to come here? Oh yeah, always. I think I used to watch that show. Was a California Dreaming? 
Yeah. This, yes, was that a show? <laughs> yes, it was and, a show. Um, <laughs> and I would watch that. I'm like, I have to move to California. I mean, this is, just, I'd watch Sweet Valley High. I'm like, oh my God, I wish I was in high school. I wish I was in high school. I used to love that show so much. And um, I mean, I knew I was gay when I was like fucking 12. Yeah, I guess, I at this like, point. Wow, you, just you know what I mean? Valley yeah, I know. I used to love it. all those shows. There was a, like a, a TV channel called Trouble and I had all those shows on it. And um, I just was like, I'm going to live in America. I'm going to live in California. And that's what I always wanted to do and like do what I'm doing now. I mean, I didn't know. How did, know you, it was how did go you get over here? What was like the first I, step to like? I literally went into my placement officer in college in Dublin, and I was like, "Look, I want a job in California, preferably LA, um, like in a hotel or something." After my degree, and they got me something in Napa Valley, and then I was like, "I cannot leave." And then just like you know, how did you know you had the talent? Like, when did like cooking become a part of your repertoire? I mean, when I've always like kind of cooked with my mom and baked with my aunt. And then I just kind of fell into it, like with my choices in college and like, I didn't get my first five choices. And then I got my sixth choice. I wasn't that smart in school. Okay. And yeah, I went um, to Arizona state university. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm not a brilliant. Yeah. So um, I was like, look, this is what God wants me to do. I'm going to do it. And, and it all worked out. Like it was the best decision I ever made. I feel like they should have though, before you came here, they should have asked, like you can come, but you, have to promise to never have chef stew on your license plate. Like that should yeah. have been something. I don't know. That Do you know what it was? You? I just would see them all the time. And I'm like, chef stew is kind of cute. You know, people call me that and stuff. And yeah, it's so <laughs> like, you see it everywhere here in LA. Like, and I never thought like people thought it was douchey. I was like, that's kind of cute. And they're like, no, it's your fucking douchebag. If you get it. And I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> uh, Jeff, um, Lewis, <laughs> Jeff Lewis let me know that. So it was great. Uh, weirdest fan interaction that you had at BravoCon, uh, la- uh, whenever that was two weeks ago, weirdest. Oh, one. so it was so weird. And I felt like, it, I felt like it came off mean. Uh, we were on the Thursday, we were there, we were loading up the books into our booth. Right. And I'm there and I Sutton's booth is not too far from ours. Yeah. yeah. And she's kind of walking around and I'm like, Amy, look at Sutton, like whatever, you know? And she's like, and she kind of starts walking down. I think she knows who Amy is. Like, a, she, she must know. Oh, she actually does. Sorry. And she walks down. I'm kind of standing to the side of Amy. And she's like, hi, how are you? And I can, Amy's like, nice to see you. Da, da, da. And she's like, I got a bone to pick with you. And I was like, well, I was like, oh, shit. And she's like, your, your impression of me is not that good. Like, I was like, what? I was like, she just came out and said it, it was like, that's fucking mean. And I, I was like, I oh, wanted wow. to interject. And I was like, Stuart, just don't say anything because I'll just rip her head off right now because I just got off a red eye. I was fucking sweating. We were loading up 27 boxes of books. I was like, this bitch now coming over to us, like, just like, you know, throwing shade. And and Amy, like, Amy is so good. Like, she can laugh it off, you know? And she's like, oh, she's like, you know what? She's like, your accent is hard to do, actually. You know, I was actually going to reach out to you to get some pointers. And, um, you know, but then I was like, you know what? That's not really me. I would never do that. You know, I'm a comedian. It's a party. It's not meant to be perfect. Yeah. Like, Amy, Amy came back very... really good. Yeah. Well, well, Stu, that what scares me is that when I met her, she like, because I know she's aware of me and certain, but I do like a Beverly Hills recap, which this is yeah. going to be a part of. Um, And I, mine is like a foghorn leghorn, which was a cartoon character of like, mm. I'll say, I'll say, I own two ballet companies. I'm Sutton Strack. And yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. And I, and if she knows that about Amy, I'm really, no wonder because I met her and she, I was like, I'm so bad. It's good with Ryan Bailey. She goes, uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. And it's I, like, I joke about that. I want to marry her. Like it's a big yeah. show. And she's treated me like, I mean, I have never, like, it was like meeting Kathy Hilton. Like, how are these people that I like just scaring exactly. the crap out They're of just me? like, I just thought she was a lot warmer and she's not that yes. warm. I That's was kind of exactly. pissed off about it. Cause I actually like her on the show. And I just was like, I was like, well, what a fucking bitch. So your weirdest like, interaction at BravoCon with Sutton, was there any weird fan interaction of like, did any girl try to kiss you? Did any like, do you- Oh, like there was groping going on. <laughs> were, people brought us bottles of wine. Some woman, she's like, she brought like mozzarella and prosciutto rolls. I was sure. like, I'm like, okay, great. Thanks. Um, Like th- there was these women that they were like, we'll see you tomorrow. I'm like, oh, you guys are here for the three days. Yeah, yeah, we'll come see you tomorrow. We'll probably see you later here. Do you want a drink? And I'm like, sure. And then they bring me back like a makers and ginger. Like people were bringing me drinks left, right, and center. Oh. I mean, they could have roofied them. I would have just drank them anyway. 
I ended up in a strange woman's bed without my yeah. candy. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. And like I would see the same woman again. I was like, "Are you here to buy another book? Or did you here like a few hours ago?" She's like, "Yeah, I have to go with my friend." I was like, "Okay, do you want another photograph?" She's like, "Sure." It was so funny. You, you brought up like in Real Housewives of New York, and I feel like you know we're they're in kind of this really weird tenuous phase yeah. where they they're going to do legacy supposedly, and then they announce the new cast. Mm -hmm. What did you like about Roni? And like, I mean, I guess when did you start watching these shows? I mean. Uh, New York, I watched from the beginning. Beverly Hills, I watched from the beginning, loosely from the beginning. Um, OC, probably like season three onwards. Um, so you were still in the Vicky Gumbel scenario era. Yes, yes. Okay. And then like Jersey, probably like the first two seasons. Then I kind of went on hiatus. Now I have to watch the new season of Jersey because I know Margaret, like she wants me to go up to her house. Dolores wants me to oh, go up to her house. You need and to Carla Manzo house. does too. Yeah. yeah. So um, um, I'm going to do that probably in December. We're going back there. And yeah, so I did a demo with Carla Manzo on stage with Cynthia Bailey. And then Caroline's like, I want you to come over to my house and do a YouTube video with me cooking in my kitchen. I'm like, I'm fucking there. Oh, hell That's yeah. That's definitely happening. Yeah, 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 for uh, sure. My other thing I wanted to pitch to you is that like, when is the peacock chef stew cooking show like when i mean like you i know you did you know did it's other so cooking funny shows, you bring but that up why can't we actually do that with bravo stars and either have that be on the yeah. bravo thing after watch what happens that's live what in i a 30 yeah. minute slot or mm -hmm. move it over to peacock and actually have yes. that and yeah when, when's that coming that's you know it's so funny i had dinner last night with a producer and um you know i was telling him what's going on so if he's a big producer he has some big shows on netflix and I'd said that to him. I was like, you know, it's like, I feel like he's like, has Bravo come to you or anything? I'm like, no. I said, some of them think they're gig. weird. It like easy, oh, it's just like a no brainer. Idea. Like it should it's be there. me just going into housewives homes, just cooking with them. Yeah. They don't even need to leave their homes. We just get a crew in there. We shoot it. Like it just exactly. it could be a YouTube show. It doesn't matter. Like whatever. No, but, it, but I'm saying it can do better. Like YouTube actually is a huge, I mean, I forget YouTube's actually bigger than TV now, but it, I don't, for Peacock looking for the content, they I are know. With Bravo, it would be such a, it's definitely going to be pitched. Idea. I'm going to pitch it. There's other producers out there that think they can make but this also, happen. <laughs> you, I mean, like, listen, I'll pay for your camera crew and just go yeah. do it. Like, like, like I know. the pilot, like, are you I know it's me? so easy. So that's like the next thing I'm working on right now to um figure that out because he was saying like look i will help you out with that to, to get it kind of going and stuff you know you just you some sometimes you have a great idea you just need the right vessel to get it to the next stage you know what i mean it's like you and, can't and people be don't realize people yeah don't realize, like people think think they see like oh you've got a book you've got this everything yeah must just be given to you and people don't realize you have to fight for every little thing yeah, yeah. That you get like mm -hmm. you know um who were your favorite characters on Real Housewives of New York? Because it, I, I was thinking about that in terms of the Ramona story that I heard with her cutting in line. And it's like, well, the, I wish there was cameras there because that's a very Ramona story. But we live now in a day and age where it's very sensitive to things that we say. We yeah. live in, you know, would you want to see Ramona back? Would you want like who? How do you what do you think could save Roni if it needs saved? Um, like I'd like to see Jill Zarin back. I just did Jeff's pod, our Jeff's serious show with her right now. She's so funny. She's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Like, what can I say? She's, I mean, that's like, what I'm saying. Like, so they're, they're funny. These real people. They're like, and she wants to be on the show. Oh, like, so give it to oh, her. Yeah, she does. Do you yes. know what I mean? It's like fine. So she wants to be desperate. She's like, I'm desperate. Like, so what? She was loving. And it's like, like girls trip. She was great. Yeah, and it's like so. Like, put her back on. Luann, I love Lou, and <laughs> um, and who else? Uh, God, give me some names. I'm forgetting. Dude, uh, well, I mean, you had Lou, uh, uh, Sonia Morgan, of course. Sonia's great. Like, I like Kelly Sonia. Ben, she's... Kelly Ben Simone was. I mean, wild. I would kind of love her back for one. That'd be great. Um, I mean, but I'm saying, like, do we need to? What I like, like Ramona, everybody's like, she's went too far with the things that she said. And are and Dorinda, I mean, Dorinda's we... coming back. Like, she's oh, going to be doing Dorinda the without yeah. it. I think Dorinda's even said she's, well, in yeah, so she, many they, words. They, they so many words they said at Bravo Gun. Yeah. Um, Okay, so winding down here, uh, I know you are perfect on the radio and with Jeff, but at a certain point, do you like sharing so much of your personal life or does it get like, yo, this is actually too much even for me because then yeah. you have strangers on the street knowing exactly what your bathroom is. Sure. Are. Oh yeah, like they, like people call me thunder shits all the time. Because of that <laughs> whole thing. I mean, which is actually really funny. Like I actually, that doesn't insult me at all because I did say that to Jeff one morning. He's That's like- your new personalized like, license plate. Are you? Yeah. yeah. Thunder, thunder shits. Thunder man. shits. And so, um, look, it gets, so here's the thing like with Jeff, like I'm like, look, have full reign of it. 
go easy on me though. Like you don't want it to come off being mean to me because you're meant to be my boyfriend. You're meant to build and me up. And also the and audience so will pick up on that real quick. And yeah. And it's like, I don't want to be like bashed on the radio. So it doesn't make me feel good and so forth. So look, it's like, it's, we're juggling it. You know what I mean? And he's kind of learning. It's almost like it's trial and error. I'm like, Hey, you went too far there. He's like, okay, got it. Okay. This was great. See how much fun with that. So like today was so much fun. Like we kind of yeah. went out at each other, but like in a really kind of fun bickering way. Yeah. And I said, that shit's funny. I said, making fun of me is funny, but like once it kind of turns a kind of a corner and it maybe if you're not in a good mood, then you kind of like, will start maybe kind of going in on me. And I'm like, that's where it gets, goes south. And Do you I have said, a safe like, word? Well, no, because here's the thing. Here's the problem with Sirius. Like when <laughs> I listen on the app, right? So I'm always two minutes behind. So I can't be like, uh, shut it down. Like I'll text yeah, him, be like, shut yeah. it down. If I'm in the car, it's live and I can do it as in time. So he'll like see it and be like, oh no, I'm in trouble. Stu text me. Like, which is kind of <laughs> funny, right? Um, so um, yeah, we talk about it all the time and it's like, we're like, we're finally getting like a nice balance. Like he's, yeah. he's learning and it's like, look, he's an open book. He loves to share everything. You know what I mean? And I don't want to be like, and I think that's what makes him great at, yeah, the, at this format. And I don't want to change that at all with him. Cause like, that's his show. And it's like, if he's worried about what he says all the time, it's not going to come out fun for no, him. And I don't want that, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, speaking of OC, uh, you know, Jeff's had Tamara on a bunch and all that. Tamara yes. is the ultimate shit stirrer and she is back this season. Yeah. And I was watching the OC panel, which Amy Phillips actually expertly, uh, I, yes. I, I thought she was a great moderator, but I was like, how do people still tell Tamara anything? Because she goes right to the pod or she goes right to the show. And that's what we want from these people. But it doesn't it crack you up how many Bravo Lebs just like they will willfully give you information that you shouldn't have. Like yeah. people are telling me stuff at BravoCon that I'm like, I, sh you don't, why are you telling this to me? Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's like, it must be hard being one of them to navigate stuff and what you can tell. Cause they just need to know, like it's going to end up on the show. And they or also you want, want attention at the same time. Yeah. So it's and it's like, you want to keep you. And there's the thing, like, it's like, it's a rat race. You want to stay on the show. You want that <laughs> few hundred, you want that few hundred yeah. thousand dollars each I year. Know. It's, I mean, who well, it's doesn't become like survivor. It's become like yeah. a contest to stay on the show. Um, Chef Stu, thank you so much for doing this today. We've been talking about this for a while. And and listen, I like I said, I met Chef Stu at the Countess Luann show, which, by the way, if you haven't oh, seen gosh. her live, you got to hear her sing. Uh, Let's give them something to talk. I about think she's coming back. I think she's coming oh, back in December. I think we're going. Holiday again. Shows. I can't. I just I'm not drinking this time. I got so drunk that time. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jeff was, was going to so... fucking kill me. It's so funny. <laughs> um. You guys, I'm telling you, the best holiday book still is Cook It, Spill It, uh, Throw It, the Not So Real Housewives parody cookbook. It really it's a real cookbook. It's, it's a real really, cookbook. No, it is a real cookbook, and it's funny. And also, we love Amy Phillips here as well as Chef Stu. So go do that. What else is coming up? Uh, Radio Andy, of course, you are on there yeah. constantly. Uh, but also... I'm telling you guys, right to NBC, right to Peacock, right to Bravo. We need the Chef Stew yes. show. I think it is a gimme. It would be easy to produce, cost effective. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, what else? It'd be is so easy. Out? Um, that's it for right now. I mean, look, it's like I've been off TV for too long now. I need to get back on again. So it's like constant pitching and like coming up with shows and. You it's know, because just, you're it's you're ugly. That's why it's, you're an ugly person, and they don't want you on TV. Look, so, it's like everything, like you know. It's happening for me. Is that what they say? Jesus. I'm <laughs> trying finally, to believe wait, it. Wait, wait. I'm trying to believe it. Mauricio or PK, who do you go for? Who? Mauricio. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Like, I, would, I would love it if he said PK is really charming. He, I mean, yeah. you know, he is. Um, Chef Stewart, uh, I'm going to give all of his information on the the uh, the show description with hyperlinks and all of that stuff to the Amazon to go get the book, all of that stuff. And I hope you'll come on again, man, because this was absolutely anytime. Just like just shoot me a DM, text me, whatever, anytime, no problem. Thanks,